Uh, greeting everyone. I am Dr. Deependra from Conceptual Orthopedic, and I welcome you all in today's connect session with Sai sir. And today sir is going to discuss uh, DNV theory uh, question uh, of uh, June uh, May paper of 2024 on trauma. So I think this talk is going to be very useful uh, to all the we can get. So without any further delay, I welcome you sir on the board and I request you to start your presentation. Now it's over to you, Dr. Sai sir. Thanks, Dr. Dependent. Hi, friends, and welcome to this session. So going off a uh, little surgical series presentations, uh, we'll be covering DNB theory questions in trauma that was asked in the recently concluded May 2024 session, uh, like what we do always. Uh, after the exams, we <clears throat> cover the questions. I mean, most of them are repeats, but uh, it will be useful for those who will be giving exam next time. Okay, so yeah, thanks. Uh, so nine questions were asked uh, in this year's uh, DNB May exams. That's huge considering trauma last two, three years was actually neglected. Um, only three to four questions were asked, but this time nine questions directly related to trauma and a couple of questions indirectly related have been asked. So these are the eight questions. Ninth question was regards to an LCP. Okay. Strangely, that was asked in the recent advances paper. Uh, what are the principles of LCP, indications and contradictions, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, now, LCP is not such a recent advanced topic uh, because it's been there since more than about three decades now. But anyway, these are the questions. Uh, the general uh, feedback from the students who wrote the exam was this year's theory paper was much, much easier compared to uh, many of the years that we have seen previously. And uh, the general feedback was it was a very easy question, but a very, very lengthy question in the sense most of the questions were so well known that you have to write significantly more number of uh, points is what students told. But if you actually sit back and uh, look into the questions, all questions have sub grouping of marks, right? So those are very, very specific questions. And no matter how much you write, how much extra you write, that's the maximum marks you're going to get. For example, if you are having a sub mark of two, and even if you write 10 pages, the maximum marks that you're going to get is two. You will not be able to get more than two marks, right? So you have to be a little intelligent also during uh, uh, during answering your papers as to look into the sub grouping of marks and then consider how much you need to write. There have been students who were not able to attempt all the questions, although they knew all the questions pretty well, okay? So that usually happens in exams that you're not able to time manage your answers. If at all, you get an easy question paper like what was given this year. Now, if you look into the questions, uh, let me read it out. So question one uh, was autographs. What are the sites of harvest? Advantages, disadvantages, and bone graft substitutes. So there are four sub-questions in this. Two plus two plus two plus four. Second question was on hemorrhagic shock, pathophysiology, management of polytrauma in a 25-year-old patient, five and five. Third question was on scaffold blood supply. So implications in fracture, six and four marks each. Periprosthetic fracture femur, its classification and management was asked for five plus five. We had non-union definition, classification and management of one plus three plus six. Pelvic ring disruption, classification, complications and management for three plus three plus four. AC joint dislocation, classification and management of five plus five. And surgical approaches to the hip, Moore approach and uh, merits and demerits. Uh, 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2. So we'll be dealing with the first four questions uh, in this week and deal with the next four, next five questions rather. There's also a question on LCP, which we'll be dealing with in the next week. Okay. So the first question, which was actually uh, on autographs, they have asked sites of harvest. The commonest, I mean, I spoke to many students after this and the commonest answer that they've written is iliac crest, uh, fibula, rib and all those things. So that's, 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 uh, that's the appropriate answer, but since you want to slightly elaborate uh, your answer and want to write it in a little more methodical way, um, the better way of answering, I may say, is so you divide into. So since they have asked you an open question of autograph, they have not mentioned what type. You yourself can divide and then give an appropriate example. For example, the different autographs that you can harvest are cortical grafts, cancellous grafts, and vascular bone grafts, right? So cortical grafts, examples... We all know fibula, strut, ribs, even some part of iliac crest, whether it is anterior or posterior. Cancellous, again, we have a lot of grafts now because of uh, uh, resurgence of rhea uh, uh, in the system. So we can harvest uh, cancellous grafts from femur cavity, tibial cavity, 
even otherwise the proximal tibia distal tibia we could scoop uh, gouge out uh, cancellous graft distal radius um, proximal uh, part of uh, ulna all these were areas where we could uh, scoop out grafts for local areas correct right? so that also these are all the examples of uh, sites of harvest photographs and muscularis bone graft usually uh, the uh, fibula and sometimes even the rib all these are examples so if you write this methodically you will have you will, chances of you getting full two on two is significantly higher rather than just briefly writing all that all the areas even though you might have written all the areas but the from the examiner's point of view will be giving you one or one and a half to the max not the complete two marks okay so that's what sit back think of how you can better elaborate your answers and write so next was advantages now there are so many advantages and disadvantages it's practically impossible to write everything but since it's only asked for two marks you may write four to six advantages likewise disadvantages okay so the most important advantage of an autograph is since it's taken from the same patient, there is no antigenicity to that. So immunological reactions are practically nil. These are biocompatible because they are taken from the same patient and put in, in the same patient and uh, no chance of disease transmission. In the sense, whatever patient disease the patient is already having, only those will continue. But uh, for example, if I if we take an uh, autograph from a donor and put it into a recipient, we do not know whether the donor has uh, hepatitis C, hepatitis HIV, all those things, all those can be transmitted to the recipient. Now, that problem will not have in autographs. And they have osteoconductive, osteoinductive properties. They have adequate mechanical strength as much as required, depending on whether we want a cortical cancellous or cortical cancellous grafts. And of course, the cost is going to be much lesser because there is no processing involved in these grafts. Whereas if we harvest and process and put it into some other patients, the processing itself adds on to the cost, right? So these are all the advantages of autographs. The disadvantages, again, are where if we, I mean, if you think we get to know that. So biggest disadvantage is donor site morbidity. Now that donor site morbidity can be pain, can be infections, can be, uh, they can have a, a chance of fracture around the area. And of course, this adds on to the duration and cost of the surgery. So these are the disadvantages of using a autograph. Okay. Then they have asked complications. Now, complications are more or less like disadvantages only. Again, similar thing, pain, infection. There can be significant hematoma formation, which can cause infection. There can be fracture and herniation. Now, this herniation can be inguinal hernias, if especially if tricortical grafts are taken from... Uh, the iliac uh, wing okay so these are all the complications that we can think of when we are doing the uh, autographs so this is this much is good enough now specifically if you write it points wise uh, so as we can see this entire question we can finish in one one page max okay uh, so even if you finish everything in one page but since you have written it very methodically and systemically uh, the 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 examiner who is correcting you your answer will be tending to give you more marks. So something like say a seven or eight out of 10 rather than if you write three or four pages and get a five or six, okay? Remember that even the examiner is not wanting to sit through the day and keep reading your answers. So it should be very, very uh, uh, discreet, very specific to what has been asked and more flow charts or diagrams or points wise writing will definitely get you more marks. That's That should be your aim before you go. So that's why when you're preparing for exams, even start preparing of how you exactly you're going to approach. You may be knowing significant amount of theory, but that might not help you get good marks. Okay. The next question was on bone graft substitutes. Now this has yes, been multiple. Sorry, this sorry to differ. Uh, there was a sub part. What are the indications of autograph was also mentioned in the question. Okay. Yeah. So this is one thing that I would like to highlight. Now all the questions that have been uh, put up, where as per what students have told us, okay, so there may be a little bit of omissions or commissions, okay, as much as they can remember, because mind you, they come out of the exam in all the stress and then tell us the question. So some some part may have been omitted or extra committed. Both of them can happen. So indications photograph, right? Indications wherever see. So indi indications of photograph are basically wherever you want a bone to uh, work as its own tissue, right? So any uh, trauma where you have a bone loss. You would want a substitute of the bone which is lost so it would be cortical cancellous so in cases so in, in orthopedics always think of all the conditions that are required there are basically eight or nine conditions it can be congenital it can be uh, uh, idiopathic it could be infection tumor uh, inflammatory process trauma uh, metabolic all this right so for congenital conditions we do like bone grafting you may require bone grafting especially if uh, something like uh, osteogenesis imperfecta or uh, even your tibial hemimalias, 
uh, all those conditions where you might require bone graft that may that might have been require uh, that might that might require uh, to use autograft infections if you if you have done a sequester me sequester me or if you have done a muscular technique where you put in a cement to take care of infection on stage 2 you would require to it to be uh, replaced the cement to be replaced by bone graft in which case you will autograft trauma like i told any of the bone uh, gaps or bone losses that happen will be required this is an acute scenario in delayed unions, in non-unions, you may require some biological enhancement and hence you might require uh, bone graft. In tumors, if you have done a curettage and you want to replace that, like for example, a GCT, uh, where you have done an extended curettage and you want to now fill up the gap, you will require grafts and autografts could be used. So all these are the indications. So I think even that was asked for two marks. So four to five conditions you can write. And this is how you could uh, plan your answer, right? So bone graft substitute was also asked for four marks. As a part, same part of the uh, same question. Uh, bone graft substitute is a um, multiply repeated question since this is one such topic which has been asked again and again. And that's why in the in the CO book as well as in the app in the in the answers you could see this particular table. Now, as a, as a student going for exams, I I think you should be well versed with this table. You should be able to exactly replicate this table. Okay.